my family and all who are visiting with us, everyone who will see this live stream in the future. We're so happy to have you with us for this Sunday morning services. We welcome to Westside's uh, virtual service where we're one in spirit, one in love, and we're glorifying God. We're so happy to have everyone here. We pray that uh, you feel blessed this morning. We pray that this service is a blessing to you, that it encourages you, and it just gives you that, that uh, fulfills, uh, fills up your zeal to get ready to face this week ahead of you. At this time, uh, I first want to say that I feel like I'm walking in a winter wonderland. I always have liked snow. Uh, I see the snow out there. I want to run outside and play in it, but I'm not a youngster no more. So I just look at it in awe. <laughs> and I always thank God for uh, you know, all the different weather patterns, because those are the things that keep us alive. Even though we may not like it, <laughs> it keeps us alive. So we praise God for that. At this time, my brother Bill Carr is going to lead us in our opening song. We just encourage everyone to lift your voices in praise to God with Bill, for God is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Bill. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Joel. Our Opening selection is 480, Blessed Assurance. Yes, God is worthy to be praised, and we have the privilege of giving honor and glory to our Lord Jesus this morning, to our Father as he guides us by his spirit. That's 480, Blessed Assurance is our opening selection. Let's sing that together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, they bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you so much, Bill, for that song. That selection is wonderful. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. God has been so uh, uh, good to us in our lives. Uh, it's good that we praise him. You know, it's good that we recognize that uh, we have been blessed by our creator in many, many ways. And so for that, we praise his name. At this time, uh, we're going to have our encouraging word by our brother Dominique. And then he will be followed by our brother Cordell, who will do our opening prayer. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you, Cordell. Good morning, Westside. And today's encouraging word, I'm going to recite a poem today 
um, titled uh, Patience. Patience is a virtue, and time is a healer. It will never hurt you, because it's only a matter of time that joy will rise like the morning sun. It's only a matter of time when the Lord's will will be done. It's only a matter of time when we'll see children with smiling faces. It's only a matter of time when love will serve as the cornerstone for many ages. It's only a matter of time when we'll find understanding in truth. It's only a matter of time because God will see you through. It's only a matter of time that we'll recollect on the things that made us evolve. It's only a matter of time when a warrior will cry out its heart's hidden song. It's only a matter of time that the beautiful things of this world will blossom again like God's first creation. It's only a matter of time and all we have to do is slow down and be patient. It's only a matter of time. And, and I just want to encourage everybody, you know, to sometimes we have to slow down to catch up. And I remember years ago when I was a child, me and my father, we didn't have the most great, you know, uh, relationship as father and son. But I remember seeing them and I told them that. I said, you have to slow down to catch up. And my father, years later, he shared with me when, when I got older, he said, he said to me the same thing. You know, I was going through some things in my life and he said, Dominique, sometimes you have to slow down to catch up. And he said, you taught me that. And it made me think this morning, I said, you know, wherever we are in our life, sometimes we have to be patient. You know, we have to sometimes slow down to get to where God wants us to be. So I want every encourage everybody, you know, to be patient during these times. Be patient with yourself. Be patient, you know, with with your neighbors. You know, just be patient during these times because I do believe, and I believe everybody else believes that you know everything will blossom again and be beautiful again, like it was. And that's today's encouraging word. You know, I want everybody to be blessed and um and strong. Blessings to y'all. Let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Father, Lord, thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, thank you for another morning of worship. Even though it's virtual, but we are still worshiping together in spirit and truth. Father, thank you for the service. This service right here, this worship service, let it be beneficial and a blessing for us so we can carry on for the upcoming week, Lord. Let this service be a blessing. Let it strengthen us to, to fill the voids that's in our lives and the stuff that happened a long time ago that affects us now, Lord. We need you. We need you more than ever. And we must run this, with, this race with patience. And Lord, we must seek you more and more, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. Let us decrease and let you increase so we can hear from you, Lord. All this prayers in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, excellent prayer there, uh, our brother Cordell. And we uh, thank you for the words of wisdom, uh, Dominique. You know, peace be still is what came to my mind. You know, uh, uh, you know there are many times that we, we really do need to hurry up and wait, you know, <laughs> slow down, you know, be patient, you know, stop and, and take some time to reflect and to meditate. So that was, uh, Dominique, that was, those are some, some very wise words, you know, there, there are may, probably more, more times than what we would like to admit that we should, you know, stop and just 
take time to contemplate about a thing and you know think before you speak and think before you act is is words of wisdom and we, we we just thank you for that at this time my brother roger is going to bring us our west side uh announcements we encourage everyone always to keep an eye out for uh, any emails or other correspondence uh, that may come your way with uh, information. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Joel. Thanks for joining the live stream worship service of the West Side Church of Christ located in Windsor Mill, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore. If you would like to help with the live stream, please contact Joel Armstrong for an assignment. The 2021 Zoom budget meeting will be right after church today. We have good news from Westside. Yes, Michael Felton was baptized yesterday. He is a friend of J.R. Spencer the son of Debbie Spencer. Some of you may remember Debbie and still uh, talk with her. The Spencers live in California. On Wednesday, January 27, boxes of toiletries donated by Westside were delivered to the children's home in Catonsville. The first Book collection was held yesterday at the building. The next collection of books for the children's home will be held on Saturday, February 13, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thanks from the Homeless Ministry. If you have a prayer request or would like to pray for someone, please join our prayer call on Monday morning, seven to eight. You can call in at 646-876-9923 or use the West Side Zoom channel. We offer online weekly Bible studies. Today at three, Bill Carr, leads a class on the book of Revelation. At 4.30, Sandy Deckard and Laura Sandy lead a children's Bible class for grades one through four. Wednesday night at 7.30, Anthony Powell leads a series called Divine Gathering from the book of Acts. The Zoom credentials for this class are different. The Zoom ID is 874-5723-1282, passcode 033800, or you can dial in at 301-715-8592. There will be a slide with um, information to, to get those numbers again, if um, all that was too fast. Thursday night at 7.30, Alan Deckard leads a class on the books of Samuel. Nicole's class for teenagers is scheduled to start this Saturday February the 6th, 2 p.m. on the West Side Zoom channel. Ladies Bible study is held on the first Saturday of the month. And this coming Saturday is the first Saturday in February. So this Saturday, February 6th, 10 a.m., Barbara Smith, will be teaching a class entitled Hope for the Hopeless. All live stream and class information can be found at westsideforchrist.org. Click on the live stream and classes. 
The church leadership can be contacted by sending an email using their first name and the domain at westsideforchrist.org. To give online, you can go to westsidegiving.com or the homepage, our homepage, westsideforchrist.org, also has a link. If you would like to donate by check, you can mail it to 7009 Johnny Cake Road, Windsor Mill, 21244. This concludes the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. So much information. Um, once again, like I said, if, if, if you have not, uh, if you couldn't follow everything, please keep an eye out for emails. We, we correspond through emails a lot of time and, and send out West Side updates and bulletins and things of that sort. So uh, please keep an eye out for that. Um, the uh, the Wednesday, last Wednesday's Bible class was, was dynamite, y'all. I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to jump on. Check it out. If you don't jump on and check it out, you're missing a good thing. That, that class was class was pretty powerful, pretty thought provoking. Um, and we and we we praise all for uh, Michael Felton, who is who has given his life to Christ. And you, you know, um, the the uh, the brother that that taught him, Jr. Some some of us some of us re re remember him. Uh, he was young when he was head on, you know. So, but. Uh, He's in California and he stayed in contact with Michael, who is here and uh, has walked, you know, walked along hand in hand with Michael, you know, and, and Michael has uh, uh, made a commitment to to serve Christ. And so we, we, we just praise God for that work. We uh, praise God for his de decision. That's, uh, that's so wonderful. Um, and, and just as a reminder, of uh, the the we, we thank Carol for the work that she's doing at the children's home, um, the place where we're uh, collecting books for. We're going to have a short video next week, um, uh, uh, you know, just one to, to share, just to give you some more information concerning the children's home. And we just we just thank everybody for you know donating and and and, and just helping out with that cause. And once again, we thank Carol for. Uh, putting in that labor to make that contact. At this time, we're going to um, get ready to prepare our hearts to remember what uh, Christ has done for us. Um, to get our hearts prepped, our brother Bill Carr is going to lead us in song. Thank you, Bill. Our song of consecration this morning is 383 near the cross 383 jesus keep me near the cross as we prepare to partake of the lord's supper this morning let's sing that hymn together jesus keep me near the cross there a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross, in the cross, be my glory. 
Thank you so much, Bill. At this time, we encourage everyone to grab your fruit of the vine and your unleavened bread as Alan guides our hearts in remembering the great price that Christ paid to redeem us. Let us uh, center our hearts on the message that Alan has for us. Thank you, Alan. Every time we gather <clears throat> together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are renewed in spirit by his wonderful love and grace. Our celebration, our renewed spirit comes from our justification. We are all sinners who have been justified by God. The source, the source of our justification is stated by the Apostle Paul in Romans 3.24, where he says that we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. According to Paul, we are justified wholly and totally by God through his unmerited favor. God alone gets the glory for our salvation or our justification. Only God can justify us according to Romans 8.33 and he does it freely, not because of any works of our own, but because of his decision to be gracious. So the source of our justification is the grace of God. But what about the ground of our justification? How can God be just while justifying us sinners? The answer that Paul gives to this question is that we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 9. Jesus paid the penalty and continues to pay the penalty with his blood, not by any human deed on our part. There could not be any justification without the atoning blood of Jesus the Christ. So the blood of Jesus is the ground for our justification. The means of our justification is through faith. Romans 3.28, by faith, we receive what grace freely provides. Faith is the means 
of our justification. Our faith has its focus on Jesus who died in our place. In Romans 3.25, Paul says, speaking of Jesus, God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. But what about the effects of our justification? What does it do for us? The effects of justification is to bring us into a community of believers called the Church of Jesus Christ. A community of believers who devote themselves to good works and the pursuit of holiness and learning to be more like Christ, Ephesians 2.10. This community of believers helps each other, bears each other's burdens, and gives each other hope. In the Lord's Supper, we are reminded that we are truly accepted by God through his Son, one of Satan's most effective tools with Christians is to get them to doubt their salvation. But in the supper, we have a visible reminder that we are in right standing with God because of the atoning death of Jesus. In the Lord's Supper, by participating in the death of Jesus, we find life. Jesus, in giving his life for us, gave us a life to live for God. It is for this reason that we gather together each Lord's Day and hear the voice of Jesus, assuring us of his love when we have fellowship with him at this table, we are assured of the love of Jesus. In the breaking of the bread, he has made known to us. He, he, he is rather made known to us. In the supper, he renews his covenant with us and showers rich blessings of mercy upon us. He reminds us that we are saved. Let us pray now for the bread. Dear Lord God, in breaking this bread, we celebrate the life we have in Jesus. We are reminded that you have truly accepted sinners like us because of the atoning death of your son. Bless this meal that we now share. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now go to God as we offer a prayer for the cup. <clears throat> Dear Lord God, in the cup of the covenant, we find renewal as we continue to experience your grace every day of our lives. Bless this cup as we share it together as a community of believers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That concludes our Lord's Supper. Just a reminder, you can
can give to the work of the church at Westside online at westsidegiving.com, or you can do it by mail, 7009 Johnny Cake Road, Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21244. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alan, for leading us, leading our hearts and remembering what Christ has done. Such an excellent job at, at just painting a picture of what Christ's death uh, has done for us, what it meant for our redemption. There's no wonder it is called good news. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ is called good news. <laughs> Alan just broke it down and explained to us exactly why. We, we, we thank you so much, Alan. At this time, my brother Bill Carr is going to lead us in song as we prepare to hear this morning's message. Thank you, Bill. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Joel. Our next election before we hear from God's word, scripture reading, and our lesson is 613, hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let's sing that hymn together. <clears throat> Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved shall stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Why don't you hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand? Come on and hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And when your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home and glory your enraptured soul shall view. So why don't you hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand? Come on and hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You've got to build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to his hand. Thank you so much, Bill. At this time, we're about to hear the message from my brother, Anthony. We encourage all to grab their pen, pencil, and pad as we get ready to hear another stirring message from my brother, Anthony Powell. At this time, our sister Stephanie is going to do our scripture reading, and then the next voice you'll hear is Anthony. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture reading will come from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, and I'll be reading from the New International Version uh, Bible. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. 
They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Thank you, Stephanie, for that, uh, for reading so beautifully the, the scriptures for this morning. Um, good morning, West Side. We are here again for another Lord's Day. God has sought fit for us to be here and together in this space. Um, it's, it's just such a joy that even though we are in a pandemic, that the worship of God still continues, that God still has provided avenues for us to still to meet and, and to fellowship, even though it's a little bit different, but needless to say, God is still providing uh, ways for his people to gather uh, together and to worship him in spirit and in truth. As I reflect on this morning's readings, I'm recalled of an event in my past. Um, it was around, I would say it was, it was around about two in 2011. Um, and it was out at my home congregation and afterwards, um, you know, service was over with, uh, there was a, a lady by the name of, uh, Kendra who, I mean, has a beautiful voice and we were talking and, and, and sharing jokes about, uh, the song leader for that morning. And and I and I have to admit that the person that was leading song service that morning, that clearly that wasn't his calling. And I normally, you know, sometimes would lead songs when I'm not when I wasn't away, you know, going to various congregations and delivering the message. Uh, sometimes I would, you know, lead songs for my home congregation, and. I remember when Kendra, after service, uh, Kendra asked me uh, why I did not lead songs. And knowing that she has a beautiful voice, I asked her, why didn't she lead songs? And she looked at me with this stale look or pale look on her face. And she said, I can't because I'm a woman. That statement um, it it struck a chord with me that remained with me uh, that remains with me to this day. In even now, in recalling this story, I can still feel the sense of loss of identity or the sense of devaluing that, that came across her statement to me. In some way, Kendra felt like that her humanness was stripped from her. And after leaving that conversation and after talking and going home and reflecting, I asked myself, Am I a part of a prevailing social context? Meaning, am I contributing to this, this sectarianistic system that's at play in the church? When we read Luke's writing in the Gospel of Luke and also in the book of Acts, Luke is very intentional when he writes. 
in Luke 1 and verse 3, uh, Luke tells Theophilus that his writing is an orderly account, meaning that every detail given includes extreme and careful investigation because the subject matters that Luke presents matters to God. When Luke writes, he is writing to show God's concern or God's agenda. In reading Luke's opus, you, you will discover that Luke writes with, the, with this radical view on unity and diversity. According to Luke's gospel in Acts, the gospel is about inclusion. And anything that prohibits inclusion flirts with sectarianism. Sectarianism is a behavior that subdivides differences within groups. And this, uh, and this divide deems one group as favored and the other as less favored. Once sectarianism takes hold of people's minds, systems of thought and doctrines are established to ensure that the created, sure that the created subdivisions within groups are maintained. In scripture, there are the Pharisees and everyone else, or the Sadducees and everyone else. And as we will see in, in this study of Acts, there is Judaism and everything else. See, sectarianism creates a prevailing social context. During the days of Jesus, several groups of, of being were den or people were denied full acceptance into the social dynamics of the day. Among these groups were the Samaritans, or the Gentiles, and tax collectors, sinners, and women. In reading through Luke's gospel and in studying the historical context, people of the prevailing social context express a negative attitude towards these groups. Luke 9 and 51 through 55, Jesus rejects his disciples' negative attitude toward the Samaritan village. Luke 7, 1 through 10, Jesus favors the faith of, of the Roman of a Roman centurion, a person who is resented and disliked by the Jews. Luke 7, 36 through 50. Jesus praises the sinful woman who crashes a dinner party to show the Pharisees how the Lord is to be treated. Luke writes with a keen awareness of the issues caused by the prevailing and social context because Luke wants Theophilus to be aware of the damages that sectarianism has caused. Sectarianism divides, thus allowing cultural prejudices to saturate the hearts and minds of people. This is what Jesus is up against because Jesus knows that sectarianism destroys the humanness of people that are classified as the other. And this is sin. It's sinful. Jesus rejects sectarianism because it stands as the antithesis to unity. It doesn't allow room for unity. It doesn't allow room for diversity. It doesn't allow for uh, pe different people from different groups to, and different uh, backgrounds to, to come together and to share in humanity together.
today. We can see the devastation of sectarianism. In most isms in the world, there is a sense of sectarianism, racism, fascism, classism, nationalism, genderism, and sexism. Because there is an underlying belief that there lies a natural social hierarchy. When it comes to sexism, there's this notion that this is a man's world. You know, when it comes to nationalism, there's a sense that my nation is better than all nations, that my nation is the God-fearing nation, while other nations would have to get in line. If we are not careful, sectarianism can become addictive because if we can get because if we can get enough people to buy into it and buy into it, then we can influence outcomes that work in our favor. One of the ways uh, that outcomes can be influenced is through the painting of someone else's narrative. I recall doing a financial workshop for a church several years ago and when I was approached uh, in doing it uh, by a group of men, one of the questions that I posed, are there any women that, that, that you know in this congregation that has that have any financial background. And so they named off several women. And as they named these women, they chuckled amongst themselves and, and presented and they presented the a negative view, presented negative views uh, about, about them. They were trying to take advantage of my lack of knowledge of these women which they were attempting to categorize them by deciding their narrative. They were labeled as obnoxious. They were labeled as busybodies in people's matters. They was labeled as, 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 as people ill-equipped. They didn't allow me the time to get to know these women, but they was painting to me these women narrative for them. The bad part about this, that neither of these men had any financial background. But the sad part is that several of these women that they named to me had financial backgrounds, but these men were using their power of sectarianism to keep a male hold on the financial board of the church. If these men were invested in the Jesus movement, they would have known that Jesus is a big advocate for female involvement in his movement. If these men were invested in the Jesus movement, they would have known that women often traveled with him among the towns and villages of Galilee. And they, these women were major financial contributors of Jesus's ministry, according to Luke 8, verses one through three. But these men could not invest themselves in the Jesus movement because it means abandoning their sectarianist mindset and status, which they were not ready to give up. As we look here in Acts 1, 12 through 14, 
scriptures lets us know that they returned to Jerusalem and the scriptures names off the names of the disciple 11 at because the um Judas hasn't at this point hasn't been replaced yet and verse 14 says these in reference to the 11 all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication but luke didn't stop there luke says with the women and amongst these women were mary the mother of jesus and with his brothers 14 once again luke is very attentive what is luke saying to us luke says that these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and mary the mother of these and with his brothers but This, this is why I learned the languages of the text because I'm reading from the New King James Version and it leaves out a uh, it leaves out a verb here, a, a, a verb of being. And, and the verb being is they were with one accord. And and that's in the Corne Greek of the which is the the which is the language in which New Testament is written in. Um, but that verb there were uh, it denotes that it this is their custom. This is the communities. This is this community of Jesus, those who are involved in the Jesus movement. This is their custom. They were. This is what. This is. This is their habit of coming together and expressing togetherness. Continue steadfastly, or continue. They continued uh, to to do this. This this was an effort in despite of the difficulty that surrounded them they devoted themselves they committed themselves to be in ever devotion to each other with one accord devoting themselves to each other and and they would have the same mindset that they are all accepted and favored before God. This community believes in the humanness in each other. This community here in verse 14, they believe that they are all favored before God. You see, when we imagine the conversation of this upper room experience. They they have no sense of superiority and inferiority. There is no talk about that a man needs to stay in a man's place and a woman needs to stay in a woman's place. But this gathering is a gathering that highlights that regardless of the cultural prejudices that exists in society, those prejudices do not have any place in this space. And the prepositions here, with, three prepositions of, of with, this denotes everything that the men were doing, the women were doing as well. The disciples here are practicing the power of inclusion. 
in order for sectarianism to exist, then the doctrine of exclusion has to be advocated for. But they weren't advocating for exclusion. They were leaning into the power of inclusion. The power of inclusion is realizing the humanness in others. Uh, my dear friend, who often, you know, I consider, you know, I lean on for, you know, for counseling, for ministerial counseling and, and forethought on matters of life, tell, told me about his experience. Um, he's a military chaplain and he was talking to me about when he was uh, based at this one one place and doing the chapel service that that there was this this uh this uh female uh homosexual that uh would play the instruments and you know was one of the the chief musicians in the church and and when she came out about it that the church frowned upon it and they they basically you know the one day when she was set to you know to officiate the service they 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 got together and they wouldn't allow her and so she as he was coming to the building and she was outside crying and he grabs her by the hand and goes and intentionally walks to the front of the church with her by her side and stands and sits and worships with her and what he was doing, he wasn't condoning to homosexuality, but he was supporting her humanness that he was leaving up to God to deal with the matter. He was supporting the humanness in her. Inclusion is knowing that we are created to do life and lordship together. Genesis 1, 26 and 28, God created both man and woman in, in God's image. And God says, let them have dominion over the earth. Let them rule together for me that is what god is saying not rule like me but rule for me doing life and lordship together rejects this sense of separate worlds and this sense of superiority and inferiority doing life and lordship together invites a sense of togetherness that breeds an environment of unity that accepts the backgrounds of people in the way that they express their spirituality and bring it all together and said that God has brought us together to learn from each other. If I can go back in time. Knowing what I know now, I would have supported Kendra's humanness. I would have done more to stand up for Kendra. I would have took Kendra by the hand and said, let's go back into this space and let's enjoy praying together. As I look back, there's something beautiful about unity. 
there's something beautiful about when we rid ourselves from this, this sectarianism, this sectarianist mindset that divides us. When we practice inclusion and we, we embrace what is going on in verse 14, both men and women are enjoying their worship to God together. They are upholding their, their gifts, expressing their gifts together. They are being anti-world. They are truly practicing that the world is not their home. Because in their world, women were excluded. As you're gonna as you see later on in studying the synagogues, that the women were excluded from being in the same space with men. But the early community. The early church here in verse 14. They are doing worship together. Anytime when you come before God in prayer and lay in your life and honor God with your life, that is worship. That is doing proskuneo. Prostrating your life before God. I'll let this lesson be with you this morning. <clears throat> um, when, as we learn how to be a community together, through this journey in Acts. Let us look at the different ways that the that Luke is expressing what it means to be inclusive, what it means to be unified, what it is, what it means to be diverse in to have unity and diversity. Not unity and uniformity, but unity and diversity. And as we learn that as a community, as we learn this together and, and look at these different ways, then my, my prayer is that we experience full, that we can fully experience what it means to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit of peace. Because it is the spirit that's uniting us. It is the spirit that's gathering us. It is the spirit that has given us the ability to freely do life and lordship together. And let us lean into that. And let us appreciate it as we go along. The lesson is yours this morning. If there is anyone who amongst us who are joining us for the first time and who may have uh, questions about you know, salvation in terms of you know, having their sins removed, washed away, um, the elders and myself, we are here uh, to answer any matters concerning that. And we do that here at Westside because we don't want you confused about anything concerning your salvation that lies in Jesus Christ. And we're here to nurture that. And we're here to help you along the way. Next week, we, we'll, we'll go into Acts chapter two, the day of Pentecost. Uh, as we move along in this sermon series. And also on Wednesday nights, we'll, we'll continue on uh, 
in you know getting more in depth into this act series and at some point along the way it'll, it'll all catch up um and hopefully that what you're learning from the sermons and also what we are learning together in class session that when we come away from acts we come away with a renewed faith we come away with a refreshed outlook of life and as well uh and also we come away with encouragement and a better understanding of who we are as the community of god may god continue to keep you or and bless you and as i turn turn it over to brother bill carr thank you Our closing selection today is 118, God has smiled on me. God has smiled on me. Let's sing that together. God has smiled on me, has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Dark clouds rolled away. Sunshine now on me. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Anthony, for that lesson. Such a powerful lesson. As we think about our submitting to God, um, one of the ways we're going to do that is by being one. And, and, and being one uh, is going to cause us to grow in Christ. You know, we, we, we see that in 1 Corinthians 12 and, and in Ephesians 4, how that uh, the gifts are given so that we can work together and that we can build one another up. And we'll see that. We'll see those gifts, you know, many of those gifts being used as Anthony goes through the book of Acts. So we thank you so much, Anthony, for that lesson. At this time, we're going to have our closing prayer by our brother Cordell and then our closing remarks by our sister Cheryl. Thank you, Cordell. Thank you, Cheryl. Let's go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another worship service or um, virtual. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the fellowship that we are together, together again. And thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and truth, Lord. Lord, please be with us to the upcoming, for the upcoming week. Um, keep us full, keep us could keep us keep our mind on you, Lord, and keep looking up to you, Lord, because we can't do nothing without you. And we can't do it on our own power, Lord. Just we are just um just relying on you and lean on you for your help, Lord, for your spirit to make it, Lord. Until we meet again, I was praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. So happy and grateful that you were able to join us today and pray that you were encouraged 
and spiritually uplift, uplifted by our services today. Thank you again, Brother Powell, for that most awesome teaching of God's word. Uh, please join us if you can for at three o'clock for our Bible study on uh, the book of Revelation with our brother Bill Carr. And tomorrow morning uh, for our prayer call at uh, 7 a.m. Um, after services today, all members, please join us on Zoom in five minutes for our congregational meeting. Thank you once again and have a blessed day.